Uh, so I'm down the creek way. I just think, you know, at this point, here's here's something I forgot to say earlier that would have cast. I was searching for what for, that there was more to the to the medicine wheel than the the blogs where people talked about you know doing uh, you know shifting the words around and all that stuff. The biggest clue about the medicine wheel is, if you study it, is the medicine wheel. Think of the circle. You know, the medicine wheel is a circle, right? It's got the four, it's got the two intersecting lines. Those intersecting lines were for the ages. It was like youth, I guess, young youth, middle age, old age, something like that. Death, birth, whatever. So that was that was part of what it was. But the part that killed me was, and it was again another one of those Yahoo moments, was, you know, aha moments, was uh, the main thing that the medicine wheel represented was a, uh, it was symbolic of the teepee, the round teepee, round medicine wheel. And in the teepee, the Shoshone, I'm pretty sure it's the Shoshone we're talking about, who they think did that. They, their hearth, their fire would be a circular fire in the um, te circular teepee. So it was symbolic on many levels of, the, of basically the home and the hearth. It's really, you know, when you think about it, that obviously conjures up the concept of the blaze, the hearth, the fireplace for the Indians. But isn't it also extremely sad, sad to me, that, you know, just like everyone else, they had their, their home and their family was their uh, everything. And so here they had basically all of their culture was surrounding the idea of home and family. And I mean, home and family, just like we supposedly do. You know, and sometimes when we go up against other people, I mean, as far as war and stuff, we try to pretend like they don't think like that. They're just these animals that run around with no concept of family. I mean, heck, the, the all the animals have a concept of family. <sighs> it's part of life, you know. But anyway, that's the part I forgot that made the wheel, that made the medicine wheel so important to me was that it was in fact symbolic of the hearth, hence the blaze. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back up to the petroglyphs. People have been there. People have been there on this quest and not found it. I don't know. I'm just trying to keep myself from getting killed up here. <laughs> As you can see, it's, you got to watch yourself. It makes you more flexible. It forces you to be more flexible. I've just now I've just gotten kind of used to, you know, putting my weight on my. For the younger people, they're all going, "What?" Yeah, this is what it's like when you get older. You you start to not trust your body, because when you're a kid, you could just lean into things with your legs or stuff, and you knew your body would follow and it would support you. Now, it's kind of like you lean into things with your first leg, and your l l last leg kind of goes, "Well, what do I do now?" <laughs> Because there's, you don't have that, um, you've lost that uh, memory where, you know, the body kind of worked more together. But it's coming back slowly. <laughs> it's like my legs are going, seriously, we really have to do, learn this shit again? So they're learning it. So I'm getting a little more flexible running around up here in the mountains. Um, pretty easy footing at this point. And you can see the creek ahead. It's um, five after one. Something about these outings in the wilderness, I do not drink soft drinks. At home I drink ice water and iced coffee all day long. That's it. I never drink sodas, I never drink diet sodas. And when I get out, oh, it must be sugar. Because when I stay out here long enough every day, I just so want a nice, like McDonald's Coke, you know, where they really mix it just perfect. Syrup and soda. It's up there somewhere. I'm dying for a Coke. But I know when I get back to my car, which is a mile away, it's still going to be a long drive for civilization. So, you know what? I think I'm going to head out. <laughs> my typical half-assed treasure hunting. Hey, I'm here for three more days after today. I'm going to go back and Google Earth some more. And just kind of, uh... Oh, that was weird looking there for me. It looked like a petrified 
deer head or chart or something. Um, as usual, the blaze is, is the thing that's just messing my head up. Tomorrow I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go down the creek. I've pretty much, as I've repeated over and over and over, decided that the concept of seeing the medicine wheel, although it's a wonderful idea for the blaze, it just doesn't happen. Now maybe if I get up those damn petroglyphs and I can see it wherever they are, that'll freak me out and I'll be convinced that it's at the petroglyphs. But I'm going to do that tomorrow. I want to go have a... Um, I want to go have a good Mexican lunch. Yeah. I think I've heard two birds. There was this big, big ass black and white bird that was kind of following me. He's kind of just checking me out for a while. He'd like, wherever I'd sit down, he'd kind of come perch and look at me. Obviously wondering, you know, what are you doing out here? And then. I don't know. It's not the petroglyphs tomorrow. I know this one blog, the guy saw the petroglyphs. Some, I think he had a friends and they'd been up and down the creek and... I don't know. I may go down to where you can go into the creek. There's another dirt road down the way and just go up there and see if there's a creek. I mean, there's a blaze, some different whole blaze than this. This blaze is really messing me up. It's messing a lot of people up. I mean, I just thought that was perfect. People have it in and, you know, figured out this weird way of looking at the poem. And it says, try the creek wheel. And then he said, try the wheel. Right? But I, but it has creek also was there, which no, I, of course, noticed. And then, um, you know, the whole thing with the teepee, it being symbolic of a teepee and also being symbolic of the, of the hearth inside the teepee. I thought that was kind of amazing for Blaze. But anyway, outside of that black and black and white bird, it's huge. Uh, I've seen a blue jay a couple times. That's it. There aren't even animals out here. I mean, I'm seeing their scat, and I'm seeing their um, footprints. There's some right there. I'm seeing their footprints, but I'm not. And is that? And actually, there's a lot of animals out here from all the footprints and stuff. But. I'm just, you know, I don't see him. All right. I guess I'm going to head out of here. Nice, boring walk. Long, boring walk. Hard, boring walk when you're going uphill over rubble. Bye. Hey, that's me again. I'm still here. You know, this wouldn't be a bad place to die. I mean, not that this is the blaze. Or... And where the treasure's at. This is so beautiful here. I've just laid down for a few minutes and closed my eyes and I thought, this is really not bad. Yeah, get eaten by the animals or whatever. It's not a bad way to go. If you could lay out here in a, it's kind of like a little big man, you know, when he said, it's a, it's a good day to die. And he was, oh, but it was snowing that day, wasn't it? Or it was raining. Oh, it was snowing. Then he goes, maybe, oh, maybe it's not gets up. <laughs> I think little big man, I think that was true because I think that showed the Indians as the most humane and understandable um, I, I just thought it really was, was realistic and I have no way of knowing that. Anyway, I gotta get out of here. I got a long way to go. The medicine wheel's over there somewhere. I can't see it from here. It's just barely out of sight. So I'm on a high bluff on the other side. But, uh... So I'd lay down for a while. Took a short nap. I didn't notice this before. Somebody's put a feather and a ring on the stone. It's obviously been moved, though. Let's put a white something there. 
kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. But I think about this whole concept of the teepee and the hearth being represented by this circle. You know, and these Indians, I don't really, you know, I don't really have any sympathy for anybody, white or black or red. But it's so sad to me just to think that here they were a culture that basically was just saying, you know, our our home and our hearth and our family are what we want. We just want that. It's not a lot to ask for in life. And here, in this case, the Europeans came over and pretty much wiped them out. Except, of course, the Indians still live in various manifestations all over the United States. Some of them doing quite well. I mean, economically. With the casinos, I'm trying to say. But that's really not the point I was trying to make. It's just sad. Sad to, sad to think of what it was like in the end days when they just were totally outnumbered and they were totally out technologically. They were totally out foxed and they just, yes, they just wanted to get along. But that wasn't to be. Anyway, I'm heading out. I'm going home. Because the blaze is not near the trail, is it? Well, I guess technically you could say it is. If this is a blaze. Anyway, that's it. I'm on 318 in, Col in where am I? I'm in Colorado. You gotta love it, right? I mean, thank God I'm a nice guy. Of course I would never hurt a cow, but look at these guys. They're just, they're just out. <laughs> You're on the wrong side of the fence, guys! I don't know, I thought that was kind of humorous.